Welcome back guys, my name is Matt, and do you remember a few videos ago I did a $21,000 Ultimate Gaming PC? Well it kind of blew up recently and it's my most viewed video by far, so I figured I should do an updated version of that, fixing any problems that it did have. Now instead of setting back $21,000, this build will set you back 28 k so here is the Ultimate Gaming PC and Setup Mark II. There are a few things I do want to mention before we begin, and they are directed at a few comments that I received on the last video. First of all, this is not what I would do if I was given $28,000. This is what I would do if I was given $28,000 to build specifically a gaming PC and setup. Also, this is not just all the most expensive items, I can promise you that. We're going to have a 4960X processor, not dual $7,000 Xeon, so there is definitely a line between ultimate gaming PC and just stupid wasting your money, but it's a thin line and you can't really tell it in some places, so I really tried to just ride the edge and see how expensive I can make it without just being stupid. Now with that stuff out of the way, let's get into the build. For the CPU, we're going to go with the Intel Core i7-4960X, coming in at $1,050. Now this is basically the best CPU you're going to buy in today's market, not getting into the Xeons. It's a 6-core processor with hyperthreading, so it's read as 12 threads on your computer. It is also turbo speed to 4 GHz, and plenty overclockable past that, so you will be able to get some insane speeds with the cooling I will mention later in the video. And lastly, it's on the LGA 2011 socket, meaning it has a ton of PCIe lanes, which we need for our 4-way SLI, which I will also mention later in the video. For the motherboard, we're going to go with an ASUS Rampage 4 Black Edition coming in at $500. Now this is a recently updated motherboard line for the LGA 2011 socket. I like this motherboard a lot. First of all, it supports 64GB of RAM, which we will be using. It completely supports 4-way SLI, which we will also be using. And it has 6 SATA 6 ports, which we will also be using. For the RAM, we're going to go with 64GB of Corsair Vengeance 2133MHz RAM, coming in at $880. Now, we are getting 64GB, completely filling up the motherboard, but why? Well, you can do a lot of things with that amount of RAM. First of all, you can run a RAM disk, which is like a super fast storage solution for a low amount of space, but extremely fast. You can also run servers or virtual machines or really anything you want to do with that RAM. It's also extremely fast at 2133MHz because we can. So we will. And we did. For storage, we are going to go with 6 1TB Samsung EVO SSD drives coming in at a total of $3,300. So that totals to 6TB of SSD space, and really fast space too. We are filling up all SATA 6 ports on this motherboard with Samsung EVO SSD 1TB drives. Now, what you're going to do with this space is really up to you. Personally, I would probably take two of them and run Mac OS X on them, and then take the other four, raid them, and run Windows on those. But really, it depends on what you want to do. You could raid them all, use raid 10, raid 0. Really, it is up to the user, so I am not choosing one specific way. It's your choice. For the GPU, we're going to go with 4-way SLI'd EVGA GTX 780 Ti's, coming in at $3,000. Now, the 780Ti's are the fastest GPU on the market right now, and they are extremely overclockable, especially with the cooling solution I will mention later on. Also, you are getting four of them, and a lot of you mentioned that 4-way SLI sometimes degrades performance because drivers don't support it, but if that is the case, then you can just disable one, run them in 3-way SLI, disable two, run it in 2-way SLI, and no matter what, you will get the most performance you possibly can. For the case, we're going with the Corsair 900D, coming in at $320. Now, this is a case I used in the last video, and I'm using it again because it's flat out the best option. It has a ton of fan mounts for radiator spots, which we will be using, and it looks great with custom water cooling and has a ton of space for any parts that you put in there. Now, for the cooling, a lot of you mentioned that I shouldn't go with an all-in-one cooler. I should definitely get fully custom water loop cooling, and that's exactly what we're going to do. It's going to come in at about 2000 bucks. I didn't actually spec it out, but that's a rough estimate, and it will include two 480 millimeter radiators at the top and bottom a 360 millimeter radiator at the front, all the tubing you need, all the fittings you need, the reservoir you need, and it will, in, in the end, make a very quiet system, allow for some insane overclocks, and it will look really good. Now, speaking of those radiators, we're going to need some fans to cool them, so we're going to go with 11 Noctua NFF12s coming in at $330. Now, that is a fan for every single radiator spot, only single-sided, not push and pull, just like a pull configuration. And it, these fans, I really like them. Even though they're brown and light brown, a lot of people don't like that, but they're extremely quiet, they cool really efficiently, and I personally don't mind their color scheme. For the power supply, we're going to go with the Lepa G-Series 1600-watt PSU coming in at $350. Now this is actually a pretty sweet PSU, it's 80 plus gold certified meaning it's really efficient and delivers clean power and it's completely fully modular so only you only need to plug in the cables that you're going to use which helps with cable management and airflow. 
For the optical drive, we're actually going to get the Asus Blu-ray drive at 100 bucks because at this budget you really should have a Blu-ray drive even if you don't use it. And to put the icing on top, for the OS we're going to go with Windows 8.1 Pro, 64-bit coming in at 130 bucks. This is really all you need, it supports all the RAM we have, it supports all the uh, components we have, and it will just run pretty fast. I use Windows 8.1 and I personally like it a lot. So now we're going to move on from the gaming PC itself to the setup. This is actually where a lot of the money is allocated to. Now keep in mind these are all personal choices. These will be my choices, you will probably have different choices, you might agree with some things. If you have different choices, post them in the comments, but just keep in mind that there is no one right answer. So to start off with the keyboard, we're going to go with Corsair Vengeance K95, coming in at $150. It's a fully backlit, metal constructed, looks really great keyboard, and mechanical key switches. They've got Cherry MX Reds, which are really just perfect for gaming and would fit this build nicely. For the mouse, personally I would get a Rat 9 coming in at $140. This is a wireless gaming mouse, it is extremely customizable, you can adjust so many things on the mouse itself to make it fit any hand. It is wireless, it has a great battery, great DPI, and it seems pretty awesome to have. It comes in a bunch of colors, I would probably get white, and has a pretty good DPI at 6400. For the monitors, I would get three Dell 32 inch ultra sharp 4K monitors in surround coming in at $10,500. Now this was a very controversial subject in the last video. I would get these three 4K monitors because they are all have awesome colors, are perfect for video editing and multitasking. I can play games and surround on them. And a lot of you will say those four 780Ti's can't handle three 4K monitors. If you are playing a graphically intensive game, you can go ahead and disable the two and just play on one. But if you are playing like Minecraft or some really light game, you can play them across all three and that will be an awesome experience even if you have to lower the settings a bit to high or even medium. We're actually also going to get a TV for this build. I'll explain it in a minute. We're going to go with a Samsung 55 inch 4K 3D TV coming in at $3,000. Now we would put this TV right above the three monitors and surround. So if you want to just lay back and watch a movie or Netflix or even like play games with a controller, you can do so. You can just lean your chair back and you have this awesome 4K 3D TV right above your monitors and it would look pretty epic too. For the speakers, we're going to simply go with the Audio Engine A5 Plus white speakers at 400 bucks. They look great, they sound great, and they would be an awesome set of speakers to have for this PC. For the headphones, we're going to go with the Bayer Dynamic T1 Audiophile headphones at 1000 bucks. Now these are the top of the line headphones when it comes to audiophile headphones. They come in at 1000 bucks, but they are extremely comfortable, they sound amazing, and when paired with the amp I'll mention below, they will really come alive and just blow your mind away. For that headphone amp, we're going to go with the Bayer Dynamic A1 audiophile headphone amp coming in at $750. Now this is an amp that you put on your desk, you plug your headphones in, it gives additional power so you can get the right volume on those headphones and really get the most out of the sound in them. For the microphone, we're going to go with the Blue Bluebird coming in at $260. Now this is the perfect microphone for this build because it's not ridiculously expensive, but you will get some incredible sound quality out of it. You can just put it on desk or stand, and it is not ridiculously expensive, and it looks pretty good too. We're actually going to get a gamepad too. We're going to get the Razer Orbweaver. I have the Razer Nostromo right there. Uh, the Orbweaver is the like big brother of that because it has mechanical switches and it's a little bit more ergonomic and adjustable. And I actually noticed it does help with gaming and it has made me a bit faster. That could be a placebo effect, but I feel like it has anyway. And the very last thing I'm going to mention is that we will get the Oculus Rift coming in at 300 bucks. Now, I, this is actually one of my favorite additions to this build because the Oculus Rift is really the, the leader in virtual reality gaming right now. It's not even, the consumer version's not even out right now. It's still the beta version, but I would get that beta version. This PC will be able to power it easily and it really gives you that cool 3D virtual reality experience that everyone wishes they had. So that about wraps up this video guys, I do want to say a few things first. First of all, if you would change anything in this build, post it in the comments below, I want to see what you would do, and I may even use it in a future version of this video. Also, thank you for 1,000 subscribers, we hit it last Wednesday, that's an awesome milestone, we are growing so fast right now, I couldn't thank you guys enough for this, just thank you from the bottom of my heart, I cannot believe that we're growing so quickly and we have hit 1,000 people that want to watch my videos every time I put them out. Really, just thank you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. My name is Matt, and as always, stay classy.